Electricity. No longer simply a luxury, but a basic necessity with growing demand. And as the world battles global climate change, it is now of utmost importance that the availability of clean and affordable energy, accessible for all industries, Sam Aiden, established in 2013, offers various end-to-end -end solutions in the renewable energy and environment sectors. Beginning with feasibility studies, aided by our professional environment consultancy services team to project execution and management, covering engineering, procurement, construction, and commissioning with operations and maintenance. Exercises operated diligently by our team of experienced engineers and technicians. Understanding the capabilities and benefits of solar energy, our focus on solar photovoltaic panels, where the sun's rays are converted into clean electricity to power businesses and lifestyles. It is an important first step forward for all industries towards clean energy. Sam Aiden delivers the total solution to generate clean energy through solar photovoltaic panels effectively, with a pledge to protect the environment through our process. From aspects of engineering and design, our team is piloted by pioneers in the industry of solar photovoltaic systems, from the initial conceptualization, working to ensure that our designs are compliant with world-class industry standards. Qualified experienced and expertise to drive our trained team to evaluate position quality and integrity as the top priority, procuring components parts of the highest standard for all our projects. Professional on-site monitoring and construction covering civil, structural, mechanical, and electrical works is backed by detailed commissioning tests done for all installed solar PV facilities. The capabilities and reliability of our team of engineers and technicians enables Sam Aiden to offer services to operate and maintain large-scale solar projects, ensuring all sites are under our care, perform at its optimum, and living up to its designated requirement. Our reputation and track record is our testament to deliver only the best products and services to all our customers. With our first large-scale solar power plant in 2018, initiating the continuous success of other installations all around the country, solidifies Sam Aiden's position as a leading company in renewable energy solutions in Malaysia. Our goal is clear. We are committed to a sustainable future with excellent renewable energy solutions while taking care of the environment. Sam Aiden, your energy partner for a greener future. Hi and good morning everyone. My name is Najwa and I will be your moderator for today. Welcome to our Energizing Life with Biomass Power webinar. We are very happy to see quite numbers of you who are willing to join this webinar despite your packed schedule. Just to let you know, this is actually our first time holding this kind of webinar and we are very happy to see all of you with us here today. So the topic for today's webinar is the introduction of the utilization of biomass energy. And this will be presented by our speaker, I.R. Sim Jun Chiat. Before I proceed further, there's a few housekeeping rules that I would like to highlight. This session will be recorded and will be made available via our YouTube channel, which is Samaiden Good Berhad. 
And if you have any questions for our speaker, please be sure to comment your questions in the comment section below. And we will try to answer as many questions that we can. But this is also subject to the timing. Now, let's turn the time over to I.R. Sim Junchiat, which is our speaker for today. I.R. Sim has an extensive experience in designing, fabrication, installation, and commissioning of various engineering systems. And in fact, he has delivered for more than 50 boiler and power plant systems. And at Samaiden, he is the manager for biomass and biogas division. Now, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to IRC to explain more about the utilization of biomass energy in Malaysia as well as Southeast Asia countries. IRC, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nazwa. Hi, everyone. We are very glad to have you here today. So, today we are going to talk about biomass energy. I was very excited when I was invited to talk about biomass energy because biomass is something that very potential in Malaysia and the nearby region. But many people still don't have a very good understanding about biomass. And therefore, I hope this webinar will help to give you a better understanding about biomass and biomass energy and will help to promote biomass energy to the public. So now, let's us start the webinar. So today, we are going to talk about biomass energy. This webinar will be divided into three main sections. First, we are going to talk about what is biomass. Second, we are going to talk about why should we use biomass. And third, we will talk about how can we utilize biomass. Now, let us begin with the first topic. So what exactly is biomass? By definition, biomass is organic material coming from plants and animals, which are produced in a sustainable manner. And it is a renewable source of energy, and the supply is infinite and sustainable. There are many examples of biomass. For example, wood waste coming from the furniture factories or sawmill, byproduct coming from the palm oil mill, agriculture byproduct such as rice husk coming from the rice mill, horticulture waste such as tree branches and tree trunks, or even food waste found in municipal solid waste are all examples of biomass. Now, we are looking at a cycle of biomass energy. From here, we can see that biomass can be sourced from trees and plants, or even byproduct and waste and we can convert this biomass into energy or product which are useful to humans. And in this process, we may release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And ultimately, this carbon dioxide will be absorbed by the trees and plants again through the process of photosynthesis. So in this process, the plants and trees will absorb water, carbon dioxide, and the radiant energy found in the sunlight, and they will release oxygen and glucose. So this glucose or sugar is a form of chemical energy which is also known as biomass energy. So just to share a trivial fact, there are evidence showing that human beings since 1 million years ago already learned how to create fire from wood. And so we can say that biomass energy is the first energy that being utilized by human beings. And we humans have a very long and extensive history with biomass energy. Now, after we know what is biomass, we'll move on to the second topic. We'll talk about why should we use biomass. Why should we use biomass? The reason is simple. Because we are staying in the region with abundance of biomass source. Looking at Malaysia, Malaysia is the world's second largest palm oil producer in the world, accounted for 26% of the world palm oil production. Currently, we have about 450 palm oil mills running, and we are generating about 80 million tons of biomass waste every year. Just to put this as a comparison, in Malaysia currently, we have about 32 million population. Meaning to say, for every one of us out there, 
there will be two and a half ton biomass waste produced from the palm oil mill every year. Other than that, Malaysia we also have a bunch of forestry products, and therefore we are also constantly consistently ranked among the top ten largest exporter for furniture in the world. If we look outside Malaysia, we look at our neighbor Indonesia. Indonesia is the world largest palm oil producer, accounted for more than half of the world's palm oil production. And they are also the world third largest rice producer in the world, producing about 34.7 million tons of rice every year. If you look at Thailand, Thailand is the world third largest palm oil producer in the world, accounted for 4% of palm oil production. Other than that, they also have many other agriculture activities and they are producing about 80 million tons of biomass waste coming from the sugarcane, rice, oil palm, and wood waste. So now we have a problem. Since we are creating so much biomass waste, how should we handle the waste and what can we do with the waste? There are two ways we can do it. The first way is just we simply throw away the biomass waste. We can dispose them to the open area or any landfill. But let's have a look what happened if we were to throw away the biomass fuel. When biomass waste or organic waste is being disposed to the open area or landfill, you will undergo a process which is known as anaerobic decomposition. So in this process, bacteria will break down the biomass molecule into carbon dioxide and methane. So this carbon dioxide and methane will be released to the air and carbon dioxide and methane is also known as the greenhouse gases because they are able to trap the heat, they were able to capture the heat and retain it inside our atmosphere. So when you have too much carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere, our atmosphere temperature will go up and will cause global warming effect. Other than that, when the biomass waste mixed with the rainwater, we also produce leachate. So this leachate or dirty water, it may seep into the underground and pollute the underground water or river water, causing water pollution. So this is the reason why we say that by throwing the biomass waste to landfill or dispose it away, it's a bad choice because we are causing the air pollution and also water pollution. Now, if we don't want to throw it away, what can we do with the waste? We can try to reduce the byproduct. There are many ways we can reduce the byproduct, which we will talk about it later. But here, I would like to show you the easiest way to reduce the byproduct, which is to burn the biomass waste in the biomass boiler. So, when we are burning the biomass waste in the boiler, the biomass molecule will combine with oxygen and it will produce carbon dioxide, water, and heat. So this heat energy is something that we can utilize. We can convert the heat to electricity, we can use it for heating purpose, or we can create chill water and other purpose. So until here, some of you may start to question me. Since I mentioned that carbon dioxide is bad, it's a greenhouse gas which will pollute the air and cause global warming. So why am I still saying that by burning the biomass waste in boiler is a better option as compared to landfill? Now, to answer that, we will need to look at the two processes side by side. First, we look at what happened if we were to throw away the biomass to the landfill. The anaerobic decomposition process will produce carbon dioxide and methane. Whereas, if we burn the biomass in boiler, the biomass waste will produce carbon dioxide and water. So the difference between this process is, in the first process, we will generate methane, whereby in the second process, there's no methane release. So it's very important for us to know that methane has a greenhouse warming potential or GWP rating of 21. Meaning to say, one kg of methane can retain more heat as compared to 21 times of 21 kg of carbon dioxide meaning to say 1 kg of methane is more harmful than 21 kg of carbon dioxide. 
And this is the reason why we try to avoid methane release to the atmosphere. And this is also the reason why the government of Malaysia are trying to cut down the landfill site and they want to introduce waste to energy plant or an incinerator plant, which is essentially a biomass boiler. Now, before we proceed further, I would like to share this beautiful picture. For those who have been to Singapore before, you may have, to, you may have been to this location. It is known as Garden by the Bay, located in the central region of Singapore. So this Garden by the Bay is a garden and a park with a two greenhouse domes. And the greenhouse dome, they replicated the weather from other places such as Mediterranean Climax. So many people, some people might have been there before, but many people don't know that this is actually a biomass plant. Now, let us look further into this Garden by the Bay. The government of Singapore, they have a green plan whereby they target to plant 1 million trees by the years of 2030. So if you go to Singapore, you are able to see trees planted everywhere in the residential area, nearby the buildings, or even along the highway. So when you have a lot of trees, they also have a government agency to take care of the tree to prevent it from overgrowth. So from time to time, they'll cut down the tree branches, they'll trim the trees, and they'll collect the tree branches, and they'll send it to facilities like incinerators or other facilities like garden by the bays. So what happened here is, when the green waste is being sent to the garden by the bay, the operator, they will send the fuel into the biomass boiler and burn it in the biomass boiler. So the biomass boiler will generate steam. And this steam can be used to power up a steam turbine to generate electricity. So this electricity will be used to power up the whole facilities. So it is self-sustained without the needs of exporting, importing external electricity. Other than that, the biomass boiler will also be used to generate steam to power up the absorption chiller. So this absorption chiller will be able to generate chill water, which can be used as air conditioning to reduce the temperature inside the greenhouse dome. Other than that, Singapore is surrounded by seawater and therefore it has a very high humidity in the air. So Garden by the Bay also used the heat from biomass boiler to power up their dehumidifier and to reduce the air humidity in the dome. So once the green waste is being burned in the boiler, we also produce ash. So this ash will be used as fertilizer to fertilize the trees and plant in Garden by the Bay. So from here, we can see that from the biomass waste, we are able to generate various kinds of useful energy, such as heat energy, electricity energy, and even chill water and dehumidifier, and you even have fertilizer. So biomass waste is very versatile and can serve many purposes. Now, these are some photos for Garden by the Bay. So the reason why I choose Garden by the Bay as the case study today is because many people tend to have the impression that biomass plant is something dirty or smelly, but this is not true because by having the correct architecture and engineering design, biomass plant can be something very practical as well as beautiful. So I hope that one day in Malaysia, we will have a similar project as well. Now, after we understand why should we use biomass, we'll move on to the third topic. We'll talk about how can we utilize biomass waste. There are many ways we can reuse biomass waste. For example, we can turn them into other value-added products, such as we can turn coconut husks into mattress. And there are also some R&D study in progress trying to turn byproduct from palm oil meal into paper. Other than that, we can also burn the biomass waste in biomass boiler directly. And from there, we will be able to generate heat energy, and we can convert the heat energy into other kinds of energy, such as kinetic energy, electricity energy, 
and etc. For other biomass which are in liquid form, we can convert them into gaseous form. So it can become biogas. And this biogas is similar to natural gas. You can use it for heating purpose or to generate electricity as well. It's quite similar with biomass. So in the following section, we'll try to understand what is biomass boiler. So in order to go into that, we need to understand what is boiler. By definition, boiler is a closed vessel in which the fluid is heated and the heated fluid or vaporized fluid will exit the boiler for use in various processes or heating application. In layman terms of speaking, basically a boiler is a vessel with water inside and will heat up the water to generate steam. From there, we can use the steam for other purposes like cooking, heating, and etc. So if we go into more technical, boiler come with many different designs and specification. So we need to know what we want when we are buying a boiler. For example, you need to know what heating medium you want to use for your boiler. There are three types of heating medium. You have steam, hot water, and thermal oil. So how do we choose the heating medium? It is all depends on your application. For example, if your factory requires a heating purpose and you need something very high temperature, so you can choose thermal oil as your heating medium. And let's say you are trying to dry your plywood and you only require 80 degrees Celsius temperature, so you can choose hot water. But in the market, 90% of the time, people are still using steam as the heating medium because it's very versatile. So for steam, you have saturated steam and superheated steam. So saturated steam are normally meant for heating purpose, whereby superheated steam are normally for electricity generation purpose. Other than that, we also need to know what type of fuel we are going to use for our boiler. We have three types of fuel, gesture fuel, liquid fuel, and solid fuel. The example for gesture fuel are natural gas, hydrogen, and LPG. For liquid fuel, we have diesel, wax, and light fuel oil. For solid fuel, it can be categorized into biomass fuel and coal. So for biomass fuel, the example are wood, sawdust, rice husk, and EFB. And for different kinds of biomass fuel, we have different kinds of technology for it, and there will be different kinds of grades. So after you know what heating medium to use and what type of fuel to use, now you need to choose what type of boiler design to use. There are many boiler type boiler design, uh, but mainly you can categorize them into fire tube design, water tube design, and combination design. So normally the fire tube design are more suitable for gesture fuel and liquid fuel, whereby for water tube design, it can be used for gas, liquid, and solid fuel. Water tube design normally can cater for higher pressure, whereby fire tube boiler is cheaper, but it can only meant for application with lower pressure, lower pressure. So after you choose the boiler design, now you need to choose what type of auxiliary system you want to couple with your boiler. For example, if your boiler is for power generating purpose, then you will need to have superheater to generate superheater steam. And you can also choose to install economizer for your boiler because it will help to save your fuel costs. And if you are burning a very high moisture content fuel, then we can install air preheater because it will help to improve the combustion efficiency. Okay, here we are looking in the overview of biomass boiler system. First, we know that the biomass waste will be sent into the boiler to create combustion. And depends on the condition of a biomass waste, we may or may not need to process the biomass. For example, if let's say the biomass waste is very wet, then we will need to undergo the fuel processing process to reduce the biomass moisture content. And if the biomass size is very big, then we also need to process it to reduce the size so that it can be fit into the boiler. Once the biomass waste is inside the boiler, 
we also need to have oxygen to create the fire. And therefore, we have a few fans to transfer the combustion air into the boiler. So other than that, we also feed the boil water into the boiler in order for the water to absorb the heat from boiler to create steam. So this water will need to be treated. After the steam is generated, we can do many things. We can use the steam to generate electricity. We can use it to, for heating purpose. We can use it to create chill water and etc. There are many things we can do. And ultimately, the smoke coming from the boiler will need to treat by the flue gas treatment system before it can release into the atmosphere. So next, we'll look into more detail on each of the section and understand how each of the system work. First, we'll start with the fuel feeding system and the combustion system. So we'll look at the video. So here, the operator will feed the biomass fuel into the working floor. It is a platform which can move and push the fuel into conveyors. So this conveyor will transfer the biomass fuel into the boiler. Before enter the boiler, the fuel will drop into a fuel transfer bin. So this transfer bin will control how much fuel to fit into the boiler. So once the fuel goes into the boiler, it will create fire. And in order for fire to happen, we will need oxygen and therefore we have air supply continuously being supplied into the boiler furnace. So the smoke or the hot air created by the boiler will be sent to a heat transfer area. So in here, the water will absorb the heat from the hot air and turn into steam. Now, before the smoke can be released to the atmosphere, it has to be filtered to capture the dust or ash which contain inside the fuel gas. So all the ash that are being collected from the furnace and the fuel gas, gas treatment system will be collected and delivered out from the plant through a conveyor system. So this boiler ash is a very good fertilizer and you can sell it away. So here we are looking at the water treatment system because we will need to treat the water before we can feed it into the boiler. And this is the feed water pump which will pressurize the water and send it into the boiler.
So here we are looking at the soup blowing system, whereby we will use air to blow away the particle which deposit on the heat transfer surface. So nowadays, all the boilers are being controlled by PLC and therefore the, the operation is automated. Yeah, so that's how the fuel feeding system and combustion system work. Next, we will look at the water treatment system. There are many equipment can be used as water treatment system for boiler, but we are going to look at two most common water treatment equipment for boiler. The first one is water softener. Water softener, the purpose is to remove calcium and magnesium from the boiler makeup water. So hard water, which are also known as water with calcium and magnesium inside, it can cause clearing in the boiler and it will reduce the boiler efficiency or can even damage the boiler tubes. So if we look at the animation on the right hand side, you can see that this is a softener. So the hard water will enter the softener and all the hard water ions will be attached to the resin inside the softener, leaving only the clean water out from the softener. So this is what happens if you don't remove the calcium and magnesium ion from your water before you feed into the boiler. The ion, the calcium and magnesium ion will form a layer of skew inside your boiler. And in some more severe case, it will even burst your boiler tubes. So other than that, we also have thermal diarrhea. So thermal director is an equipment which is used to remove oxygen from boiler water. Now boiler is made from carbon steel and therefore when carbon steel meets oxygen and water, you create corrosion. And when your boiler has corrosion, the boiler structure will be weakened and it may damage the boiler. So the working principle of the director is we'll increase the temperature of the boiler water and as the water temperature increased, the solubility of the dissolved oxygen inside the water will reduce. So when the water reaches temperature above 100 degrees Celsius, all the dissolved water, all the dissolved oxygen inside water will escape from the water. So this is how we remove oxygen from the water. Now we'll look at a video to understand how the thermal diarrhea works. The spray type is also referred to as the spray scrubber type because a separate scrubbing section is used to provide additional steam water contact after spraying. In this type, nozzles typically spray feed water in from the top of a steam environment. The feed water is first preheated with steam to prepare the dissolved gases to be driven out. Then. The feed water passes into a deaerating or scrubbing section, which uses steam to strip the dissolved gases from the feed water. The feed water is pumped from the bottom of the deaerator and sent to the boiler, and the gases are vented from the top. Yeah, so this is how the thermal director works. So this is what happens if you do not remove the oxygen from water before you feed it into the boiler. At first, the oxygen will create pittings on your boiler's pressure parts. And if you don't take care of it, it will become worse and eventually your boiler will be damaged. And after this, we will look at the full, full gas treatment system. Now we know that in biomass boiler, we will burn the biomass waste. So when you burn the biomass waste, you will create ashes. So these ashes, some of the ash will fly out together with the smoke and they will escape to the atmosphere. So in order to prevent that, we will need to capture the ash before it can be released into the atmosphere. So there are a few equipments that can be used to do that. And here we are looking at the grid arrester. 
So on the right hand side, we are looking at the multi cyclone type grid arrester. Inside, you have a multiple cyclone units. And when the dirty fuel gas enter the cyclone unit from the side, it will go into the cyclone in a cyclonic motion. So the ash particle or dust particle, which are heavier inside, will drop to the bottom, whereby the clean air, which are lighter, will exit the cyclone from the center part. So this is how we trap the bigger size particle of the ash from the fuel gas. But then this method can only be used to trap some ash or dust which are bigger size. In order to trap the fine dust, we will need to have another equipment which is known as electrostatic precipitator or ESP. So ESP is able to remove fine particles from fuel gas before we release it to the atmosphere. ESP works by use, using the electrostatic force to negatively charge the dust particle. So when the, when the dust pass through the cathode plate, the dust will attach to the positively charged cathode plate. So we we'll also look at video to understand how the ESP works. ESP, electrostatic precipitator, is a very advanced air pollution equipment that works on the principle of electrostatic precipitation. It can capture even the finest of dusts. It has a very high efficiency and it can achieve emission levels of less than 10 mg per nm cube. It has very low pressure drop of less than 20 mm water column. Principle of ESP. When flue gas with dust particles is passed through a high voltage of electrostatic fields, electrons are released. The high voltage current is passed through the anodes. The leakage of current from the anodes is called corona. These electrons charge the dust particles negatively. The negatively charged particles sticks to the cathode. This process is called collection. The flue gas along with suspended particle enter the ESP through the CFD optimized splitter and GD screen, which evenly distribute the flue gas across the entire ESP. The emitting electrodes in the center of gas flow is maintained at high voltage. The entrained particles are given an electrical charge when they pass through the high voltage electric field. This forces the charged particles to migrate towards the collecting electrodes. The collected particles are then dislodged from the electrodes to the hopper by means of wrapping. The hopper is evacuated continuously through the dust handling systems. Yeah, so that's how the ESP work. ESP. So what I have shared here is not exhaustive. There are still many other equipment can be used together with boiler system. For example, for the water treatment system, we still have a reverse osmosis system or the demin water treatment system. Same goes to the flue gas treatment system. We also have a wet scrubber to replace ESP. And all these systems has their own pros and cons, so you will need to know what type of equipment to choose. Now, before we end the webinar, we'll look at some example, the, some photo from my previous experience. So on the left-hand side, it is a six-ton biomass boiler installed in the F&B factories located in Selangor. So we all know that when we talk about F&B, food and beverage, Cleanliness is very important. But this owner has been operating this boiler for the past 10 years and he has still managed to keep the factory very clean. So, meaning to say, even though you are using a biomass waste, you can still keep your environment very clean. On the right hand side, we are looking at a 25 ton biomass boiler. This boiler is installed in a factory and plywood factories located in Papua New Guinea. So in the factory process, they will need steam to heat up and to dry their woods. And luckily for them, in the process of fabrications, 
they will also generate some wood waste. And they will use this wood waste to generate steam in the biomass boiler. And by doing so, they are able to save a lot of fuel costs because they don't need to buy any fuel from outside. Next, on the left hand side, this is a high temperature hot water biomass boiler installed in a factory in Bangkok. So instead of generating steam, this boiler it is able to generate 180 degrees Celsius hot water. So this hot water will be delivered to a glove manufacturing plant for heating purpose. Now on the right hand side, we are looking at a power generation boiler. So this project owner, they install this biomass boiler in a palm oil mill so that when there's any byproduct being generated from the palm oil mill, the palm oil waste will be delivered directly into the boiler to generate steam. And they will use the steam to generate electricity and they will sell the electricity, electricity to the grid, to the government. So to me, this is the most ideal case of biomass plant because instead of spending money to trade, to transport away the biomass waste, you are actually making money from the waste. So I hope that this webinar has been useful to you. As I have said, biomass is something that very potential in Malaysia and the nearby region. And therefore, if you have any idea or if you want to collaborate with us, please don't hesitate to contact us. It can be something it can be something as small as a consulting service or feasibility study. Or if you are intent to install a biomass plant or biomass power plant, or ultimately, if you are looking for financing for biomass projects, you can also talk to us. We can together explore on the possibility of working together. Now, I'll hand over the floor back to Nazwa. Nazwa? Thank you very much, IRC, for that presentation. It was indeed very insightful and there are a lot of interesting points there. I'm very integrated with the fact that we can actually generate electricity from wastes, such as wood waste, as you mentioned. And the fact that the Gardens by the Bay, one of the most uh, famous places to visit in Singapore, is actually part of a biomass energy plant. And from your presentation, it can also be summarized that there are a lot of opportunities and benefits that this biomass energy system could offer to us and the environment. Now, without wasting any time, I would like to open the floor for Q&A session. Just a little reminder, you can leave your questions at the comment section below, which is stated at the control panel. And we will try to answer as many questions that we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have one question from the floor for IRC. Are there any small scale biomass kit that we can consider for home use? Okay, thank you, Nazwa. Um, to answer that, actually in Western country, there are actually many people install smaller biomass boiler to, to heat up their, their house during the winter. But in Malaysia, mm -hmm. this is not applicable because uh, we are, our temperature is consistently hot. And therefore, um, it is not so applicable in Malaysia for small scale biomass system. I see. <clears throat> So uh, the second question that we have, one of our participants asked, is there can the source that cause biomass extinct to extinct? Mm, okay, not really, because if you notice from my presentation, we have been focusing on using the biomass waste as a biomass fuel. And therefore, we are not actively going to cut the trees to generate electricity or to generate steam. So we are not able, by using a biomass system and using a waste, you will not cause the extinction of the plants and trees. 
I see. So meaning that um, the source for this biomass energy will will always be there, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another question from Siti Rafi. Do you foresee biomass energy to be a major renewable source in an renewable energy source in energy mix for Malaysia and Southeast Asia country? Yeah, definitely. Because um, in Malaysia and also the nearby region, we have plenty of biomass source. And when you have a plenty of biomass source, the, the fuel will become cheap. And therefore, that will encourage they will promote the technology in this region. And so I believe biomass will be become the next big thing. I see. So um, another question, uh, what is the energy generation efficiency of a typical biomass plant? What do you say about that, I see? Okay, if we talk about the electricity uh, or energy generation efficiency, normally for biomass power plant, it is around 20 to 25 percent, depending on the brands and manufacturers of the turbine and also boiler. Is there any questions from the floor? We still have time to answer the question. Okay, so from Azam, he asked, what is the difference with anaerobic digestion? Okay, so anaerobic digestion happen when the bacteria consume the biomass and it will generate carbon dioxide and methane. So this biomass and uh, this methane gas can also be known as biogas. So that's the difference between biogas and biomass. It's very similar, except biogas can generate bio, biomass can generate biogas. And for biomass, it is a solid fuel, and biogas it is a gaseous fuel. So that's the major difference between two process. Mm. Thank you very much for that clear explanation. So we have uh, another question. What is the current status of Samaiden's biomass power plant projects signed with BTM Resources? Would you like to share about it, IRC? Yeah, uh, good question. Now, this project is ongoing. So if you want to know more about it, you can pay attention to the newspaper. <laughs> so um, maybe our participants here can stay tuned with the newspaper for any updates for our project. So another question, uh, is there any incentive or funding to use biomass energy? Yes, if you are using biomass boiler and etc., then you can try to apply for incentive with MIDA. So they, they will be able to give you uh, investment tax allowance and income tax allowance. So, but you need to apply with them. So meaning that as of now, we only have uh, MIDA for the incentive, right? Yeah, and for let's say you are trying to generate electricity, then the SEDA will also give you some incentive mm -hmm. if you are using a local meat boiler. I see. This. Okay, Ami Fami asks, uh, what is the main obstacle for biomass to be implemented or constructed in Malaysia? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, Amir Fami asks, what is the main obstacle for biomass to be implemented or constructed in Malaysia? Meaning that what are the challenges? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So from, from my opinion, the main problem with biomass industry in Malaysia is the, the people in Malaysia, we tend to go for the price and therefore sometimes people buy the wrong boiler. And when they buy the wrong boiler, the boiler, the the plant cannot run well and therefore the public has the impression that biomass cannot is not suitable and cannot run properly when you are trying to generate heat or electricity but this is not true because uh, sometimes people just go for the cheapest technology and therefore they buy the wrong design so but if you look at overseas countries like Denmark 
or even couriers. So they, they are having a very successful uh, biomass power plant. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope so that's that. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have any like suggestion or idea on how to overcome this challenge? Okay, to, my suggestion is if you want to install a, or you want to set up a biomass system, mm -hmm. if you are not familiar with it, then you may need to look for specialists or people who are familiar with it, such as you can look for Samiden, we can able to, we are able to give you some uh, mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. Um, <clears throat> so we have another question. Do you foresee biomass mm -hmm. energy to be a major renewable source in energy mix for Malaysia and Southeast Asia. I think uh, this one question has already been asked earlier. Yeah. Maybe you can just summarize it um, for the participants. Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. Because Malaysia, we have plenty of biomass waste. And when we use the word waste, meaning to say it's very cheap or don't need any money. So. <clears throat> what is better than something that don't need money. So therefore, I believe that biomass is definitely has a very good potential in Malaysia and the nearby region. So uh, do we have any like biomass project at Sarawak? One of our uh, this, us. Yeah, at this moment, we don't have um, our, our project are still focused on Peninsula, but we are still exploring on the possibility to expand to Sarawak. So um, in your opinion, uh, Sarawak is also a suitable place uh, for the implementation of biomass energy, right? Yeah, definitely. Because Sarawak, you also have a palm oil, in, palm oil mills and also you have plenty of uh, forestry product. So therefore, it is very potential as well. I hope this answered that. Mm -hmm. Does biomass power plant high operation? Uh, don't ask. Uh, mm. Does biomass power plant have high operation and maintenance fee? Okay, if you compare biomass power plant to other power plants such as solar power plant or hydro power plant, then definitely yes, because you have you need more manpower because solar panel. Once you install it, you can just leave it there. Whereas for biomass power plant, you need manpower to operate it. You need to fit in the fuel and etc. So it will have a slightly higher operating and maintenance fee. I see. Um, does this uh, fee is somewhat like similar with uh, the solar energy fee for maintenance and operation? Uh, no, it will, be, it will be higher because um, in the biomass boiler, the pressure part will undergo uh, will undergo combustion process and it will be heated and etc. So after sometimes maybe like 10 years, you'll need to do some overhaul. Same goes to the steam turbine, you'll need to service the turbine uh, in an intermediate period, such as seven years or five years. So there will be some there will be more O and M fee as compared to solar. Okay, thank you very much for that clear explanation. Okay, we have a um, more question from Siti Rafi. How can we tackle the global warming issue from the use of biomass energy? Yeah, okay. If you if you look at this, every year we are generating a huge amount of biomass waste. And now people still don't have a good solution to handle the biomass waste. So the only way is many people will throw it to the landfill. And when you throw the biomass waste to the landfill, it will generate methane gas and release to the atmosphere. So when this happens, you incur a lot of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Whereby, if you burn this biomass in a biomass boiler or you use it as an other byproduct, then you, you will be able to avoid this amount of carbon dioxide or methane gas released to the atmosphere. So the answer is, instead of throwing the biomass away, we need to reduce the biomass waste. Then you will be able to avoid the global warming effect. I see. So it can be said that um, biomass is indeed good for the environment. Yeah. So we have yes, another yes. question. Um, how many years does it typically take to construct a biomass plant? 
uh, it depends on the biobus plant size. If it's a, let's say, very small boiler, you can do it within uh, five to six months. But for power plant boiler, let's say it's a 10 megawatt power plant, that will probably take about two years. Because um, equipment like steam turbine and boiler will have a longer fabrication period. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so we can still answer um, like about three more questions from the floor. Uh, please do not hesitate to leave your questions at the comment section below and we will attend to them. Okay, we have uh, one question from Nazrul. What is the maximum power output for a biomass plant can produce? Okay, this is a very, very good question. The, the mm -hmm. question asker is probably from the industry. So the, mm -hmm. my answer to that is um, we do not recommend any biomass power plant to have the output more than 14 mega, megawatts. This is because um, the number of biomass fuel you can source within the radius of your power plant is limited. And let's say if you were to buy the biomass fuel from very far location, it will incur very high transportation costs. And therefore, we should limit our fuel sourcing within a, a set radius or parameter. So by doing so, you will notice that the maximum size that we can go for is no bigger than 40 megawatts. I see. I think um, people from the renewable energy industry will understand about this explanation, right? And we have uh, another question. Uh, what is the maximum highest temperature for hot water boiler? Okay, so for hot water boiler, uh, for normal hot water boiler, the temperature is normally below 100 degrees Celsius because anything above 100 degrees Celsius, it will be vaporized and become steam. But there are also some special hot water boiler whereby we can pressurize the water so that the water temperature can go above 100 degrees Celsius. So the highest that I have done, the highest temperature for hot water boiler that I've done is uh, 180 degrees Celsius. So this boiler is being pressurized to 10 bargage. And by doing so, the temperature of the water can reach 180 degrees Celsius while it is still retained in the liquid form. I see. I hope this answers your question. So we have one last question from Lionel. Is it allowed to sell all generated power at feed-in tariff rate to the grid wheels importing required plant load from grid or are, are biomass power plants required to support its own parasitic load? What do you say about this, IRC? Ah, okay. To answer this question, um, nowadays I believe most people are still using, are still consuming their own parasitic, I mean, to consume their own generated power and power up the parasitic load. So to answer the question whether to import the plant load from grid, hmm, I think this is something something that uh, people do not normally practice. So uh, most of the people are still uh, consuming the own power that they generated, and they'll 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 minus off the parasitic load and then sell off the remaining the remaining power to the grid. Yeah. I hope uh, this answers your question, Lionel. I believe uh, we have come to the end of the session. Um, I assume, is there anything else that you would like to cover before we wrap up? Uh, no, Nazwa. Uh, just, I just want to say that if you still have other questions, you can just drop us an email. We'll be happy to answer you. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and spending your time with us this morning. We hope that this webinar has enhanced your knowledge about the renewable energy industry, particularly biomass energy, how it works and the benefits that it could offer for us as well as the environment. And we also like to apologize for any shortcomings and for not if we have not answered some of your questions. But rest assured, um, please do not hesitate to contact us at projectsmiden.com.my for any other inquiries as well as collaboration about biomass energy as well as other renewable energy services. 
and we will revert back to you shortly. We also like to seek uh, your assistance to fill out the feedback form. As you can see from your screen, you can just scan the QR code. And it's been a pleasure having all of you today. And thank you again, and I wish you have a nice day ahead. Bye-bye.